Hello fellow modelers, back again. This is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler, video number 7, part 2 of the learning how to set up three views with the calibration box. So, my name is Milton Shoup and I'm here to help you get started in GMAX and hopefully these tutorials will uh, be beneficial in getting you started topic for the second part of this is setting up the three view plans in GMAX. What we'll do basically is set up the uh, GMAX, or I'm sorry, set up a calibration box, apply three view textures to it, and verify positioning and size of those th textures across the various views. So <clears throat> first we're going to create a calibration box using aircraft dimensions. Uh, you might ask, what is a calibration box? I kind of answered that in the previous video, but basically it's a box we set up to uh, to apply textures of the three views to to help us uh, design a 3D object against these 2D plans. So these are the plans that, if done correctly, will allow, allow us to be pretty darn precise in how we model all the parts for the exterior aircraft <clears throat> and it's uh, the box itself being created by the external dimensions of fuselage length, wingspan <clears throat> and height help us validate that the three views we have are in fact uh, correct and if we position those correctly we're going to be in, in good shape. We'll go through a couple of uh, validation techniques once we get uh, this process. Uh, once we get this process done, would you turn that light back on? Secondly, uh, once we get the box created, we'll apply three view textures to the calibration box, and and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the importance of the aspect ratio. So with that, let's get started. Uh, first of all, let's uh, zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see where it is we're going to go with this. I've created this for uh, the project of building this aircraft. As you can see, this box, if, if, you're, <laughs> if you can get your mind around it, is basically a box with all the faces and the textures pointing inwards to the center of the box. So I'm going to show you how to build the box to the proper dimensions. Uh, as specified with uh, in the aircraft uh, dimensional data and then we're going to flip the faces which are generally <laughs> pointing outward instead of inward and once we have that then we're going to apply the textures uh, to the various sides of the box alright so with that said let's get started let's just hide the one that we've got going here and start from scratch so you know exactly how to do it so we're going to hide selected over here and we're going to go to the top view and we're going up to the create panel where we have standard primitives and we're going to create a box now because we want to create length width and height that agree with the length width and height dimensional data we want to start in the top viewport so we're just going to take the mouse and with the left click we're going to click and drag downward. This gives us the length uh, parameter. If you look to the right in the parameter list on the uh, command drop down panel. And then we're going to go to the right kind of in the center of the GMAX universe here. And you see that we have width. And then we're going to let off the left mouse button. And we're going to push in a little bit. And we're done. Now we can go over well, right click, right click, and it goes away. Let's do that again. Sorry about that. Now, left click, and that completes the construction of the box. It's not centered. It's not the right size. None of that. And that's the next step. We're going to go over here to length, and we're going to put in the correct length in meters. Now, my dimensional data is in feet and inches, so I converted that to inches, and I'm using the convert tool link to which you can download if you look down below the video here in the text there's a link to download this convert tool so I'm converting inches to meters so 
for the uh, length of the aircraft, the fuselage length, the uh, inches are 657, and that's going to be 16.687 meters. So we're going to go over to the right here and key that figure in. Now, since I've hidden that, I've forgotten what the number is. Let me pull it back up here and kind of push it down out of the way so I can see the number off screen. 16.687 in length. So we've got that. And now the width is 646 inches. And that gives us 16.408 meters. So we'll key that in, 16.408. Tab down to height. We'll pull this back up and our height is 174 inches. And that gives us 4.419 meters. We'll key that in, 4.419 meters. And good, that's it. So, with that done, we have a box of the proper shape, size, and height. So, what's the next steps? Next step, going back to the top view here. Now we're going to uh, right click to clear off that box. And uh, we, we still have the box selected. You can see here in box 01. <clears throat> and we're going up to hierarchy. And we're going to arrange the pivot to ensure it's in the center of that box and align the world. We can reset scale if you want. We haven't scaled it, but good habit to be in. So now that we have that fixed, let's go to the move and uh, select the move tool. And we're going to move this to the center of the GMAX universe by typing in zero, tab, zero, tab, zero. Okay, that's done. Now let's kind of rotate around and see what we've got here. Okay, that looks good to me. So we've got a box with the fa uh, faces, uh, exterior faces. Well, they're not faces yet, but uh, facing outward. And what we want to do is convert this to editable mesh. Now, how do we do that? You may recall if you right click here on the box and say convert to mesh. Now it is editable, and we can do stuff with it, lots of stuff. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, now that we've got it selected, is we're going to select the poly sub-object mode, and we're going up to edit, and select all, and that selects all six uh, of the box faces here, and we're going to scroll down on the command panel to the bottom, close to the bottom, and we're going to flip those normals. The faces are the polys that you see are called normals. So we're going to flip those normals. So now we have a box with, and it gets confusing when it, when you uh, look at it. But there we go. So now we have the face, this is the bottom, front, there's two sides, the rear back here. So now you can see, boy it really messes with my mind. Now you can see we have a box that uh, is where the faces are inverted. So now we are ready to texture it. So we can do that. I usually convert these to poly just out of habit because it's simpler mesh that way. So what we want to do now is, is uh, texture this. And generally my approach is to texture the top and the bottom because that gives you the wingspan on the top and bottom. And that's the first thing I want to use to, to calibrate and get this three view on here. We'll talk a little bit more about three views here in a minute. So let's go to the top. <clears throat> Hit the E key to zoom in. And let's uh, do a poly select. <clears throat> now when you're doing selections in here, because you can't see the opposite side of the one that you're looking at, we want to ignore back bases. Ignore back bases. I want to select off of this kind of to select none by doing that. And I want to select the bottom surface. And I want to select the top surface. So, okay. And just to validate, uh, 
somewhere here. There we go. I've got two polygons selected. If I didn't mess that up. Well, I had two polygons. I forgot to hold down the control key as those selected. So now I have the top and the bottom. How do I know I don't have the side selected? Because you can see all these edges are white, not red. So you know that. There's another way too. You can go up to customize and viewport configuration and select shaded chokes, uh, shaded faces. And you can see that, that those two, only those two are selected. Okay. So with that done, let's go back to a viewport where I don't have shaded faces. <coughs> go to top. Whoops, that automatically does it. So let me turn that off because that can't be on when you're applying textures or you won't see the texture. So, so we'll turn that off. Come back. Now we're ready to map those two faces for textures. So we're back to the top and we're going to select UVW map. Now I don't think you have this automatically in here, so we're going to go to the drop down and pick up UVW map. Here we go. Under UV coordinate modifiers, UVW map. Okay, and that UVW map basically is uh, a gizmo uh, within which your texture is placed and it dictates how the texture is put on the surfaces that you're mapping for texture. So, uh, now that we have that in place, under some components of this, I probably should explain. Let me undo that. So that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go back. Just want to make sure I didn't mess that sizing up there. Uh, now, if I want, I want to scale this up just to explain something to you. The, <coughs> the gizmo that you see here has a little uh, handle at the top. That handle is always representing the top and the green is to the right. And uh, that's important to you as you'll know later on. That always means that the texture is facing you, not in the opposite direction. So when you apply a texture to this, you'll see that this should be to the right side and the handle should be at the top. That way you, you're oriented correctly. All right, so now we have uh, we have a box uh, ready for textures, and we've selected two faces. As you can see, when I go back and do this, you can see those two faces are still selected. So back to the top. And the gizmo is there, and it's oriented correctly. And right now, it's just, it was simply oriented to the size of the box. It does that automatically. Okay, and but that's going to get resized, and we're going to do that right now. But we're going to create a... A material by going up to the material editor and we're going to say new standard material and then scroll up here uh, all of your maps are created using this diffuse block so if you click right there it brings up this map and then I say I want a bitmap and then allows you to go scroll. Where do you want to get this from? Let's see if that's the right one. Yeah, it is. That's we're in the right folder. Where we want to go here. We want to go here. Uh, I'm sorry. Wrong folder. We want to go to three views. And we want to go to this three view. Okay, so I've selected the, the review bitmap you can see here and the next thing we'll do is just apply it to those faces now, nothing shows here when you apply it but you did see the color changed because you have to uh, select this little blue and white cube here which says show in viewport and that tooltip's not coming up the video is kind of overriding these tooltips so so that's uh, that's how you create a material with a texture and apply it to the surfaces. And you'll see that it's in fact applied. Now, the box is all one object, so you'll also see remnants of those textures on the sides uh, because we haven't mapped those yet, so they look a little funky. But that's all right, just ignore that for now. So back to top. 
Now, the part of the three view we want to apply is this part right here. However, as you can see, this uh, I suspect you can see this three view is a bit distorted. So we're, we're going to have to uh, do one more step here. And that is, scroll down to bitmap fit. You go over here and click on that. And what that does is changes your gizmo. Back to select here. Changes your gizmo to be the shape of the bitmap. And the reason that's important is we want to maintain the aspect ratio, uh, length and width, or the XY coordinates, <coughs> and not change that. Otherwise, we're going to end up distorting the size of that texture. And that's very important that we don't do that. So, as you can see, we're going to have to uh, bring that up a little. Zoom in here a little bit, and I'm running out of time on this uh, video limit, so I'm going to have to uh, do one more thing, and then we're going to break this video and join into the next in the series. But let me do the last thing we need to do here is turn this upside down. So we're going to select the rotate tool. We're in the we've got Gizmo highlighted here. We're going to rotate that 160 degrees, and if you look down at the Z coordinate at the bottom, you can see it changing. We want to rotate 180 degrees, so we're going to zero in on 18000 and let off. Okay, but well now we've got that uh, bitmap reoriented, and we're going to pull that up to about here, and we're going to have to scale this up a little bit so that these wingtips just do touch the sides of this. I've got about uh, three minutes to left on this segment. And you're going to play with this a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, but I want to give you a sense that you need to tighten this up. And if you right click on scale, you get a, a way to increment it minutely, if you will. <laughs> so that's, that looks about right. So we're going to uh, ensure then that the uh, center line is is uh, on the GMAX center of the universe. And we can just zoom in here and get that just right, right there. Okay, so we got that part done. And you'll see that that bitmap is now displayed top and bottom, top and bottom. So let's go back to top, and one other thing we're going to have to do, and I'll do it as when I come back to continue this in part three, we're going to have to tighten this up, and then we'll get on to the other sides. Be right back with the next video.